number 489, crown him with many crowns, 489. wonder if I'd, oh, there we are. Welcome to Mass. Always a special welcome to our visitors here at St. Paul the Apostle. I do have a few announcements for you today. First of all, available at the uh, main table we have at the back of the church, our uh, quarterly magazine from the Archdiocese has come out on the way. And it's got some very good articles about reconciliation in it. So um, uh, pick up a copy. Uh, there's um, some also on the table on the side over here. Also, I want to uh, remind you that in the bulletin, you'll find all kinds of information about the uh, upcoming um, garage sale. So um, please look at that. See if there's possibly anything that you might have that you could donate to the garage sale. It's one of, a, uh, also of our big fundraisers here at the church. And there's a number to call there. You can call Frank if you have any questions about the garage sale. Um, we're also going to hear a message about uh, youth ministry and young adult ministry at the end of Mass. 
Um, but in the meantime, let us stand and uh, give pr a pr uh, praise to God. Our entrance hymn is number 746, All People That on Earth Do Dwell, 746. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Uh, today is the third Sunday of Easter, and as we might expect, our readings um, really speak about Easter again, but they add a little twist, and we'll, um, they want us to think about how the Easter um, message of the resurrection of Christ affects us from day to day. And so we'll look at that later. But now we admit to God that we need his help constantly. We need his mercy. He is our advocate before the Father. And so we ask for forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the heart.
Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. <clears throat> Excuse me. At the temple gate, Peter addressed the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And now, brothers and sisters, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter, the first letter of St. John. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now by this we may be sure that we know him, if we obey his commandments. Whoever says, I have come to know him, but does not obey his commandments, is a liar, and in such a person the truth does not exist. But whoever obeys his word, truly in this person the love of God has reached perfection. By this we may be sure that we are in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples told the eleven and their companions what had happened on the road to Amos and how Jesus had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I, myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord.
Yesterday I had a couple baptisms and I sat up here like this and uh, seems to be better for my back. So, here we are. Of course, we're only a few weeks, a couple weeks from Easter. We celebrated the resurrection of our Lord. Last week we talked about divine mercy. And hopefully you had a, a better sense of uh, the mercy of God and how he uh, looks at us with his tender care and love. But this week we need to ask ourselves, so what? What's next? What do these two things mean for us in our daily life? Well, I think if we're going to do this, we have to admit that there are people here today who are living in the resurrection, who don't have trouble believing that Christ has risen from the dead. And I think you've already um, had an opportunity to know that that, um, that resurrection is real for you. It's, it's not just something we, we read about, but that we feel that Christ is closer, the Holy Spirit is guiding us. When we come to church, we, we feel that in our hearts. It lifts us up because this is just part of who we are. It's become part of our belief. We also know that the scriptures mean a lot to us. And so we listen with care. Maybe we even prepare before we come by reading the scriptures and um, meditating on them. And I think one of the things that uh, signifies someone who, with faith is to have joy. Now, our lives have lots and lots of sorrow in them from time to time. That's the reality of human existence. Um, but we can still have the joy of knowing that because Christ lives in us, that we're going to, everything's going to be okay. Now there's going to be days we're going to say, God, where are you? We're going to say, God, why did you abandon me? As our Lord said. But pray that we know his presence among us. And we are lifted up. We're given hope. We are a people of hope. That's how we give witness to the resurrection. That we don't stay in that that bitterness. We don't stay angry with God or other people. But God eventually brings us to a place where we are joyful. And we have a desire to love. You know, that's one of the things that is most important about our faith is the desire to love. I know there are some, there could be some here today, for whom God seems very distant. You don't necessarily feel that he's with you. And maybe kind of living on the surface. We go to church because we have to, or because our wife drags us to church, or maybe mom makes us come to church. But you know what? Good for them. I'm glad they did. Because when we open up our hearts, wonderful things can happen to us beyond our imagination. And so Christ wishes to be a part of who you are and you a part of him. To live in God and to have God living in you is a wonderful thing. And I think the only way we can get through this world unscathed. We need that assurance. You know, the very fact that you're here this morning tells me that you already know there's something here that you need. That you need to hear, that you need to feel, that you need to understand. One of the things that will allow us to do that is to get rid of any bitterness in our life. And I mentioned that before. Bitterness um, can really block God's love. Because when we're bitter, we just say to everyone, get away. 
we become grumpy. And we say, no one's any good. And we've got to get over that bitterness, that resentment, that anger. It stands in the way of God coming into our heart. And instead, we pray to God, help me to be grateful. You know, we can have a loved one die. We can have a loved one who's very sick. We can be struggling because we can't pay the bill. Or maybe we're having trouble with our children. But we can still be grateful. And gratitude comes naturally from knowing God, being close to God. You might say, well, what am I grateful for? What do I have to be grateful for? Well, you're here right now. Your faith has brought you here. The first gift that God gives us is faith. And I'll tell you right now, that faith can be lost. Unfortunately, faith is the one gift that God takes away if we don't use it. It's, it's sad, isn't it? And we know that there are people in our world who don't understand our faith. They think we're just crazy. Could be our kids, could be our parents. By the way, I heard yesterday that um, uh, France had 12,000 people enter the RCIA last year. It's a record for them to become Catholics that were not baptized. It's quite a few people to join the church. And they said most of them, most of them had parents or grandparents who were Catholic. But now they've come along and they said, I want what they have. And we give witness just by living our lives, just by coming here today. I have to tell you a story that when my mother passed away, we all went to the house and we said, okay, who wants what? And mother had very diligently as a teacher marked on the back of every gift she ever received her name, the name of who gave it to her. And so we got those things back. We didn't want them, we put them back in the, in the grouping. And everybody picked something, grandkids, everyone. You know what most of the grandkids wanted? Her rosary beads, her prayer book, her statues and whatever. Not many of them went to church. But they wanted that because it reminded them of their grandmother. So if you're ever thinking that it makes no difference that you're here and your kids aren't, or your grandkids aren't, have faith. God is working in them more than you realize. The last thing I want to say is this, is that what about sin? Like what if we're, we're trying to, to, to get closer to God, but I just, you keep falling into sin. It, it could be that you're, I don't know, you're having trouble and you, you cheat on your partner. Or maybe you are, are um, doing something at work that's illegal. Or maybe you're um, really being vengeful against someone. How do we get over that? Well, the way to get over it is to love. We start by loving first. And then the rest takes care of itself. You know, loving covers a multitude of sins. But here's the thing. The closer we get to God, the more the light of Christ comes into our, our uh, eyes and we see what we have to do about sin. So love God, love one another, and the rest will take care of itself. You know what they say of St. John? St. John was the only one who was not martyred of the apostles. And when he was old and he died, like a, something like 96 or something, can you imagine, that was old for their time, they would carry him in to the church, a feeble little old man, and they'd say, tell us, tell us about Christ, tell us about a faith and so on. And he would say the same thing every time. He said, love one another. And the rest will come and it will, will happen. They couldn't get anything else out of him. 
love one another, and the rest will happen. I think, you know, today, if you, you um, think that I'm talking too much about the love of God, or the mercy of God, or being close to God, then you, you have a way to go in. Because ultimately, what our faith is about is not how many sins we have. Although, that's what in the past we may have been told. And we have to remove sin from our life. It will come when we don't want to sin. When we say to ourselves, I need to get rid of that sin. I can't be close to God and do that at the same time. But know that when we, we act as a people of the resurrection, we realize that God is very merciful, then we uh, will become a people so grateful for the faith we possess, so much so that love is all there is, and the rest falls into place. Together we stand, profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Received by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried, descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand, God, Father Almighty. Amen. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body. And the life everlasting. Amen. As members of the church, we are witnesses to God at work in the world. We ask God the Father to grant us all we need for the spreading of the gospel. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Gagnon, and all the members of the church, that the Spirit will open our minds to understand the scriptures and empower us to share the message of God's love and forgiveness with all whom we encounter. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the grace of forgiveness, that we will be open to God's free and generous forgiveness and strive to forgive others as we have been forgiven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace, that the Spirit will open dialogue and new understanding amongst nations, communities, and families who are in conflict. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who feel bound by their past, that God will heal and free them so that they may live life fully. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For refugees and immigrants, that God will lead them to safety and help them find communities for support and opportunities to use their talents for the good of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Clara Orallo and Rosa Germono. May they share in Christ's defeat of death and be clothed in the new life of the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise you for your gift of peace, which the world cannot give. May we hold fast to it by our willingness to recognize Jesus as Lord in our lives. We make our prayer 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your the glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O God. But at this time, above all, uh, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life. 
The halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is a ransom from our death, and his rising from rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts. Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with your blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At 
the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. And I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. You got it. Now just a little higher. Perfect. Just a little higher. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple things. First of all, um, the choir here is looking for more members. Uh, they're looking for uh, piano player, guitar player, vocalists. So if there's anyone here that would like to join, um, you talk to them after Mass. They're going to be right here. Uh, secondly, I want to tell you that our we finally got out our annual um, financial report. It's a very short one, but it'll give you an idea of where we stand. And now, Brooklyn, I think you have something, um, an announcement for everyone, too. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So just a little update on what our youth ministry has been up to. Um, in the past couple weeks or months, we've been doing prayer stations with the youth. So that includes just going through different forms of prayer and helping them to experience what type of prayer it is that they like and that they can grow with and learn how to do. Um, we all also have done panels where the youth can ask questions about Catholicism that they don't typically get to ask and we answer them to the best of our abilities. And we've also had guest speakers, which has been really, really nice. We do have youth group tonight. It's here from 6.30 to 8.30. We are doing a movie night. So wear something comfy, and we hope to see you there. It's for grades 6 to 12. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Brooklyn. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go forth in peace during this Easter season to preach the gospel by the way we live our lives. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is number 826, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, 826. 826. 